Okay, well, when you do that, we're never gonna have a civil discussion. I don't give a fuck. I don't wanna have a civil discussion. I wanna call you assholes. Yeah. By believing these ideas, you're inherently disrespectful of oh, so, color, so you don't... of women, oh, really? of gay people, oh, really? of people with depression. How, is, how, are, we, how, how, are, we, how are we inherently disrespectful to those people? Because your policies hurt us. And you're white assholes, white bros, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry dudes. that I'm white and that automatically means I'm so white. So white guys God. not allowed to have any opinions? You, um, well, you have shitty opinions. Like, I mean, you're allowed to be as rude as you want, but... Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day, And I you're mean, allowed to be as privileged and much of a dickbag as you want. And except, this is what you're except doing let, here. Let's see who's throwing the insults and who's being respectful to you and not, you're not calling... You're not being respectful. Oh, These policies so are not so respectful. So so let's listen to your Let's look at social countries incorrect. like Venezuela. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's, how did the Soviet Union work out? They were socialists. <sighs> They, oh wait, they failed! Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Well, I mean, I'm paying my loans. I don't have. Yeah, he's paying his loans. Yeah, that's nice for we you. We have these things called scholarships. Man. We have. So because I'm oh, a white because man, he's I white, can, not yeah. because I work. How hard. how does how Look at your <laughs> ugly asshole face? Like you are so into it, that you can't even <laughs> this see is it. Really this is actually really funny. How yeah. how pathetic this is. I know you're adorable. <laughs> you're so cute. I love talking to guys like I'd rather... you. Because you're pathetic. You're like little worms, and I love it. You're so cute. Well, no, so are you funny. gonna make a point? Or are I mean, you, just, you know, no, the, I'm just yelling you know at you. the vast That's my majority point. of the people who work for us are women, actually. Yeah. Those poor people. I have done my research. I have done my research. You're fucking old. Old. You're fucking a white male. Yes. In America. Yes. Look at all the fucking uh, black people that are Mexicans. It's not a fucking issue compared to the black people that are police. Bullshit. The white guys are proud. You're a white man. This is fucking bullshit. Feminism is cancer. Thank you very much. This actually happened to my eldest son, who was in grade eight. Uh, he was in the, in the schoolyard playing. A grade one girl walked up to him, slapped him across the head, and said, <clears throat> you are not allowed to hit girls. You cannot hit me back. Mm -hmm. I'd like to... Well, at least she was being honest. You know, an, an adult woman who would do that would probably find a way to turn herself into the victim. Women deserve a space, safe space on campus. Queer people deserve a safe, safe space on campus. Trans people deserve a space, safe space on campus. You mean how? Enough. Why do men need a safe space on campus? Why do men need a safe space? Because the very idea of an event, of an event where men are talking about men's issues in in a non-sanctioned manner, then you have what happened at the Warren Farrell protest. I don't know if you watched the footage of that, right? But if I were one of the men who was trying to attend an event talking about male suicide and all kinds of other stuff, and I had some woman who knows she can get away with it up in my face calling me every name in the book, screaming at me, I don't think I'd feel very safe, right? Okay, and, and frankly, men are the majority of victims of public sphere violence. I'm not saying that any of those statistics or male suicide, any of that stuff exists, because it does. Men are the victims of more workplace violence, workplace uh, su like suicides, low uh, enrollment rates. That's that. That's not systematic oppression in society. Really? I think really? that I think that when really? when a six-year-old girl when a six-year-old girl can hit a, another child and get away with it and never ever have to suffer retaliation because he's a boy. Okay, I think that's systematic. How? 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 Because if the system intervenes and punishes the boy for hitting back, right? It's systematic. Today, I'm on day two of my menstrual cycle, and I'm out here in beautiful Lake Tahoe, where I'm going to show you how to do a uh, menstruation offering. So, what I like to do is go out into nature, um, or in my backyard. Right now, I'm not at home, so I found a really nice place out in nature that's um, public land, and I 
tune in with Mother Nature and with Earth and ask where is a good place to offer my blood as, as a gift and as healing. Um, here I have some blood that I have saved from um, wearing a diva cup, which I don't have with me in, in this moment, but basically it's a cup that sits inside the vagina and collects blood, um, similar to a tampon except that it's a cup. Um, and when I'm not at home, I take that blood and put it in a container so that I can properly put it into the earth as opposed to just flushing it down the toilet or um, in the sink. Um, and that's because our blood is very precious and um, it holds our DNA and it holds our life essence. So for me, it's very important to honor this sacred uh, fluid. I also have, um, I don't like wearing a cup or wearing something inside of my vagina all the time. I, I had to get some pads and um, soaking them in water and then taking the, the blood with the water out to your plants, um, your garden, or to the earth. So what I'm going to do is take the plastic backing off because I don't want to put that into the ground. Although it's going to go to landfill anyway, but when I'm in ceremony, I'm going to just stick with the um, part that's biodegradable. Um, so I'm going to tear off, I was able to, to tear off the, the whole cotton part, and I'm going to put that down here. It's kind of two layers coming off. So this part, unfortunately, I'm going to have to throw it in the trash, but that's, a, that's okay. Um, and then since I have the liquid blood, I'm going to pour that in as well. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm really, um, I'm really setting intentions and saying prayers for myself, asking for healing, um, forgiveness, offering, offering healing to the earth as well, because this is a symbiotic relationship. Um, we're humans that live on the planet earth, so we definitely have a give and take relationship with the earth. So I normally silently do my prayers, uh, but for the sake of this video, I'll just kind of say out loud, I ask for healing of my body. I ask for cleansing and I give healing to the earth. Genocide. 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 I'm just giving you... <laughs> I love the mansplaining. I'm enjoying it. You're loving what? The mansplaining that's going on. What's... What well, just mean? talking me through how... how what well, you, what by you, not answering the question, what by you, what you, what repeating suggesting? processes which are not related to the question that I've asked. What's, what's mansplaining, Senator? Well, it's the slightly patronising and condescending way that you're responding right. to my questions. Well, I would suggest, Senator, that if you're putting the word man in front of uh, some description of what I'm doing, you're doing that which I'm sure you're very much against, is making a, a sexist implication about how I'm conducting my role well, as man. Well, then the easiest way what, to do is it... What, is that what well, you're saying, Senator? Well, what I'm saying is that the way you've been responding to me has been patronising and condescending, and I have responded to that. So the easiest by, by way to by deal with this is not, imagine, is not ima to, imagine, Senator, is not to, to have that way in responding to the questions I've asked. Imagine the reaction, Senator, if I said you were woman splaining. Turn down the weed. Small smoke weed. For everybody out there who ever said Barbie was too perfect, there's a doll for you. The normal Barbie, who has cellulite, stretch marks, and now even gets her period. I'm talking about the Lamely doll with realistic body proportions and a passion for educating girls about their own bodies. She comes with a $10 period party extension kit, an educational pamphlet, doll underwear, 19 colored pads, and stickers to track periods. The founder told Time Magazine, it's just what happens in real life. We wanted to put it on the doll so it's not a scary thing. I don't give a fuck. They also released a funny video which shows why some girls might prefer to learn about this stuff from the doll instead of their parents. Cause we 
Real girls, period. Real girls, period. From now on, you'll have a myriad. Real girls, period. Real girls, period. Real girls, period. From now on, you'll have a myriad. Fuck this. Of aims and objectives, like every other liberation movement has. I think it's clear. I mean, it's, as anybody who has witnessed three girls fighting over one man uh, can attest, you know, women can't agree on anything. They can't agree on the methods to anything. They can't even run a fem female liberation movement. Look at the history of feminism. I mean, look how many different definitions of feminism. You're entitled to define it how you want, but other people don't agree with you. Sorry, you don't get the uh, you don't get the monopoly. And in fact, your version of feminism is this big now. Um, you know, most feminists are the batshit crazy progressives. You know, that's not what feminism means anymore. I'm sorry, like, I agree with you on loads of that stuff, but it's just not what feminism is anymore. Um, and the, his the, the fact that the history of feminism is so fraught uh, with counter, like, rows and backstabbing and bitching and, you know, all these internecine quarrels and renamings and, you know, no, no, this is feminism. Well, you have to look, what, what does feminism have that no other movements have? It's in entirely women. One last may not respect and you did not allow me to have a platform to to do that so I'm I think you're I'm right. taking uh, you I can't I can't I, I can't I think do you have a question I do. Okay. my question my question my question is if rape culture is a myth then explain why Kesha was not allowed to break the contract with her executive when he obviously raped her. Uh, I'm not I'm going to comment on an individual case um, I, that I know nothing about. You're obviously better educated in pop culture than I am. I'll have to pass, I'm afraid. Okay, uh, let's just do one more. Let's give somebody else a spot. Thank, thank you for coming up, sir. What's your shirt say? It says uh, feminism is cancer. That's what it says. Feminism is cancer. Unfortunately, this person was never seen again. He will be truly missed. They were out of war with Islam. Are we not in a war? That is the most ignorant, stupidest thing I've ever heard. Are we not at a war with radical jihadism? Okay, but are they not at a war with radical Christianity? Okay. Oh, my, God. Where are we at war with radical Christianity? Really? No, really. I, I'm do I don't know. Are you kidding me? No, actually, explain to me. Just. No. We are war with the radical Christians. Uh, yeah, they're trying to target us for no reason. Where are the radical Christianity war? Where, where is that happening? The people in power. The people <laughs> no, in power want in Nepal, to make us turn on each other. That's exactly why you're trying to do this. These are, to... these are radical Christians? Are. Feelings from I people. I just want to know about this radical Christian war that's going on. I haven't heard of it. Ask other countries. That's all I got to say. Wow. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Do you know what that means? Yeah, I actually lived in the Middle East for two years as a child. Well. Fuck. That's really good. Now, if you could reply with the proper, you know, like, assalamu oh, You see, I, I had a... Yeah, no. Yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> see, have a good day. Growing up there as a young girl, I didn't really have... wasn't a big fan of, like, having to cover myself all the time. And, you know, the rape... the actual rape culture that goes on in the Middle East. And you know, throwing gays off of buildings and such. I, didn't, I wasn't a pretty, I wasn't a big fan of that. Being an American over there. Neither am I. But you don't think Donald Trump is after the same policies? I don't think he wants to throw gays off of buildings. No. No, but he's openly against them in radical form. Open against what? <laughs> gay people, Islamic people, black people, Mexican people. He's all about the hate. What did he do to gay people? He's openly slandered a bunch of. Uh, what did he say? I don't know. I was uh, about this. I haven't heard this. So. You haven't heard anything about him? I haven't heard him say things, bad things about gays, no. Okay. Well, look at stuff from the 1990s. I don't know if you can even really compare a few th saying a few things to really throwing them off of buildings either. I don't think You're right. Cares. You're right. <laughs> Sticks and stones will not break bones. But words do hurt. The social justice warrior motto. Yeah, I think I'd rather hear a few nasty words than uh, be thrown off a building. Me too. 
And that's where we're all the same on a human level. Don't think it's quite a valid comparison, is my point. Okay. Well, that's different. Have a good day. I think, and I mean this in the nicest uh, and most complimentary way possible, you're probably atypical in most respects uh, as, some, as a sort of workaholic um, of either gender. Um, you're probably not typical of women, you're probably not typical of anyone uh, in the kind of work that you do. What I'm talking about is not, you know, bashing women for not putting in the hours. What I'm saying is, in general, women look for different things from life, so they look to fulfill themselves to flourish in slightly different ways. Um, and, you know, of course, if you take the, you know, if you look at the end statistics about pay, they're going to reflect that. That's not a necessary problem now. When people lose the economic argument, they always switch to the social argument, as your other guest just did. And unfortunately, the problem is that a lot of this is underpinned by this sort of constant victimhood complex that women are encouraged to buy into. They're, encouraged, they're given this victimhood script about, you know, whether it's rape culture on campus or pay um, under the average, uh, under the male average. And most of it's based on ridiculous sort of social science studies that don't stand up to the, mi the ba most basic scrutiny. Most of it simply isn't true. And I think the majority of women don't want to be patronised, don't want to be given special privileges, don't want to be given special dispensations. They want to go out to the workplace, be paid what they're worth, and of course, you know, if they want to raise a family, they're not going to get to be CEO, or they're not going to be get, get to, you know, raise a raise to be a partner in a law firm. You can't have it all, um, you know. You can't do all of these things. And what really sort of frustrates me, and I think frustrates a lot of ordinary women who, you know, find these sorts of debates a bit dull and a bit mystifying. Um, is that there's some sort of somehow implication always behind the scenes that being, you know that, that motherhood is is you know is a bad thing and that it's a bad thing for a woman to aspire to raise a family and to be a mother. Actually, it's sort of one of the most extraordinary things that any anybody can accomplish and anybody can do. But there's this sort of assumption that you know well if you if you do that then we've got to make sort of special dispensation when you go back to work and pay you more and give you all these benefits and whatever rather than celebrating the unique things that women can do in society that men can't. He started off that answer, Nikki, by trying to compliment me and take the wind out of my sails. You yes. have a go. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I I've got no time for that argument whatsoever. You know, women <laughs> want to do many varied and amazing things with their lives. Motherhood might be part of that. But you know, again, if that's such a wonderful thing to do, why are men not bending over backwards to take time off to raise their children? They're not because the culture is not set up to encourage men to, to share the load of care. You know, women, even when they're married and working, do more uh, domestic chores than men do. We've seen these surveys. Um, time and time again and I think it's really insulting to say that women you know might not be as inclined to work as hard or want different things from life there are plenty of women who are hugely ambitious just look at the number of graduates that we have now women are outstripping men they're getting better degrees uh, what we haven't seen yet is is culture change to accommodate and to reflect that and I think the other thing is that it tends to be older women often that are also in part-time work positions but we shouldn't just like leave them to flounder they're often picking up care bills for elderly parents as well as looking after children and the rest of their families so you know I, I just think Milo's argument is ridiculous that women you know shouldn't be paid as much because they want other things from life okay Milo uh, we've been given more time so you're going to have to work even harder it's more than 40 <laughs> years since the uh, Equal well, Pay Act and yet still it is a fact that women do not earn as much as men no, no, I'm sorry, it's not a fact. You, can, you, can, you, can, you, can only, you can only say that if you take broad brush averages across all industries and all genders and you can say the amount of money going to women is a bit less. Well, it's not, I mean, it's, like, for one thing, it's illegal to pay a woman less than a man for the Have same word, work. Nick, Nick, if, interrupt him, Nicky, go on. No, say, let's, it's let's, it's okay, illegal for, to pay Milo, a woman. If that's, the case, if that's Milo, the case, then when these work. results are published, they won't reveal anything. They won't reveal any difference, but they're going to. That's the point. There the whole reason David Cameron is come encouraging I, it. I, 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 want them, I want them to be published because what they're going to show is that at all stages, all else being equal, the genders are paid the same. Or even what they might show, you're saying the culture hasn't changed. I think your argument's 20 years out of date. The culture has changed, which is precisely why there are more women going to university, more women graduate from university, they're getting higher grades. They're are two to one favoured when they go for job applications, particularly in science and technology, and they're paid more, depending on whose figures you believe, um, up to the age of 30, 35 or 39, it's probably about 35, women are paid more than men. But so whatever gender pay gap you're talking about has already no. been fixed. But it um, hasn't. So it the, hasn't. Good, the, good the, news for, the good news for you is that, um, you know, there isn't a problem anymore, although there used to be, and that if we do release these figures, which I'm very excited about, they're going to prove me right. So I guess we'll have to wait, wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not true. I mean, the point is that the gap is there still, and older women in particular suffer more from it from younger women. We shouldn't just leave older women, you know, to flounder, should we? Just because they were part of a generation where no, it was even I'm more difficult for them to get on. I'm making a specific explanation about where these figures come from, and you haven't really addressed the um, the point that I'm making. What I'm saying is that you can you can only create this gender gap when you take a broad brush across all genders, all sectors, all work. That doesn't reflect the different choices people make, and employers aren't, you know, um, don't shouldn't be forced to pay a 
full-time salary to somebody who works part-time. You haven't come up with a solution to that, and you haven't addressed the problem with the figures, which is that no serious economist treats the gender pay gap as a problem to be solved. No economist thinks this is a problem because they realize what I'm, what I'm is explaining. Is that male economists which... or female economists, just to be clear? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, where That's I get my, most of my figures on this from is for a, from a feminist female academic, Christina Hoff Summers at the American Enterprise Institute in the US, who looks at the figures from the UK and the US, and she does a broad survey of all economists, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of all genders, but my source for, for this sort of stuff is generally Christina Hoff Summers. So she is a, fe a female feminine, uh, uh, sorry, a female feminist academic um, who is mystified that this is a, this, uh, this sort of feminist myth that won't die. Yes, there is a problem within the black community, and yes, the police we need more policing inside our neighborhoods rather than less, because if there are more police officers, there aren't going to be as many shootings, as many open air drug markets, uh, you know, kidnappings, which and is high. Black people who were shot by the police, there are many? There are, there are. I mean, uh, I think it's like 153, uh, or no, about 153 to 200 that died last, last year. And that's, it, it, it's tragedy, it's a tragedy when, whenever, uh, you know, a police officer shoots somebody or when anybody dies. But to blow it out of proportion, to say that black people are being shot every single day is a lie. Um, you know, I think 965 black people died last year. And of that, I think 40% of them were white and the other 30% were Latinos and then others, what have you. So black people, I think as a percentage, it was like 17% and they're 13% of the population, which means on average, I mean, when, it, when you actually scale it down, they're pretty much represented fairly. And, when, and by the way, there's only a million police officers in America, a million police officers that are police, policing 320, 340 million Americans, right? <laughs> so when 900 of the people die, justly or unjustly, you're not even talking about one tenth of one percent. That is like a that is like a 99 percent uh, uh, you know uh, satisfaction rate, and uh, when it comes down to policing. So there is no discrimination in the United States. I didn't say that. I don't. I mean, I, of course, there's discrimination. There's discrimination. When I mean, it, uh, are you married? I mean, if you when you pick your husband, you're going to discriminate against a lot of a lot of men. I mean, there's, there's discrimination of all sorts. I'm not saying that there's no discrimination. I'm not saying that there's no, there's no racism. I don't think that the police officers are systemically racist, systematically racist. And I don't think it's a problem, to be honest with you, in, in America. So you said there is racism and discrimination. What would Donald Trump do about it? Um, I, I don't think I don't think Donald Trump can really do anything about discrimination or racism because it's a it's a single thing, right? So I mean, if I wanted to be outwardly racist to somebody because you know because I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, how is Donald Trump going to stop me? Is he going to put in a law that's going to throw, throw me in prison? Well, then who's I mean, there's going to be a lot of you know free speech violations and what have you. Donald Trump, no president can stop somebody from being racist. It's your own thoughts. That's called thought policing, and I don't think that we want that. We don't want that in America. Fuck American imperialism! All cops are bastards!
cried because yeah. of that flag. Little kids made this flag. Every one of those. This flag represents slavery. They want to flip it. They legitimize the movement every chance they get. They look for any reason to make this about something else. They want to drop that. That was my property. That was my property. That's fucked up, bro. You know me? What's gonna happen Kansas now? Mom. Get your own flag. You know me? That's Why would you burn my property? Don't be the artist. Black Lives Matter came up here and started having their protests. And then uh, stole one of our flags and burned it. Why would you burn my property? That was your own flag. I understand. What do you mean? Not yet. You see what you guys are doing? This is the limit here, bro. You pushed the flag. You broke the law. You did. Yeah. You guys, you brought guns onto a fucking I know who you are. I was there to argue that. I got you. I got you. No name. I'm going to fuck you. 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 Okay, let's move on. And uh, is this a setback for free speech? A controversial documentary on the men's rights movement has had screenings in Melbourne cancelled after a petition claimed the film was misogynistic propaganda. The Red Pill was made by a woman to look at whether feminism has demonised men for their masculinity. The filmmaker found many of the arguments from the men's rights movement convincing and reveals this in the documentary. Um, and I'll throw this one to you, Denise. Do you think that this should be banned? No, I do not. Mm. I think it's uh, a woman, a feminist, did the, the film. So it's her point of view and it's also about a, a man's, the men's movement of what they're, they're thinking. I'd love to see it. Mm. Well, we wouldn't have known about it if it hadn't <laughs> been banned no. from this p palace mm. cinema in, uh, in Melbourne. Can I... Can I can we finish this and can we go back to Dream World again? Because I've got a comment to say. Um, anyway, but yeah, I I'd mean, like to see this film. Mm. Well, the great irony with this film, I mean, talk about an own goal. Like, not is it chill, not only is it chilling that someone could actually think in their head that in a democracy something should be banned just because they disagree with it. Like, they say, oh, it's misogynistic propaganda. Well, so what? You don't have, have to see it. You don't have to. Have they even seen the film though? This I, is what I, makes. I, it, it, but is there a difference I'll between? Is there a difference between um, if you're disseminating things that are wrong, say an anti-vax type mm. uh, movie where the science is not uh, with it, and versus an opinion-based thing like this, which is but but this even, even anti-vaccination propaganda. That's what I mean. So this is different in terms of you, you can't refute it.
you, you can say, well, this is your opinion on how feminism lies and where the men's rights movement is. So really, it's, you're allowed to have your say I just think that. it's really mm. scary when we start banning things because we don't like the content. It's really, really of, scary. Of it's, it's up there with book burning and we know what it's, that turns into. And also, it's, fascism. it's incredibly stupid because firstly it plays into the narrative of the men's rights groups nutters who say that there's this incredibly oppressive uh, feminist force that is suppressing men's voice and this actually proves them right this actually proves them completely and you're right. also you're also and sort of saying you're, you're too stupid giving... to make up your own mind we're so worried that you're so stupid that if you watch this film you swayed. will be swayed and that's right and it also gives them acres of free publicity and we're all talking about it now if the film oh, had just been screened no just one would be something? talking about it can i say something here sure. well i yes it would be good to see the movie but it's i mean looking here it talks about people who are pro-rape racists in the film we have no problems as as we should not banning people from visiting australia preaching hate mm. isn't Hang on. Aren't these people preaching hate who are well, we don't in this film? Well, we don't know. Seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but though obviously but some people have seen it. No, the no. bit about the pro-rape, the guy said if he was in a court, in a jury, and there was overwhelming evidence that the rape was occurred, he'd still vote no, not mm. guilty. Now, and, obviously that guy is... But he didn't say that in the movie. <laughs> he said this no, in this a is, previous... Yeah. So he's, he's, he's got <clears throat> form, but yeah. still. So, yeah, I, I'm, I, I must say I disagree with you guys. You think it should be banned? Well, yes, I do, because so I think if it does... should be able to say, you, no, Fred, no, 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 I think if it but, does, no. I think if it offends, intimidates um, or insults people, oh. and it is not... In the matter of public interest, I, I have no problems with this being banned. People just got to stop being so hypocritical. You can't no. just say let's ban it because people I don't like killing. what's in it. You know, killing. like what if I am people of color? You don't know. You can't tell me what my skin tone is. You can try. It's probably not going to work out for you. You're going to be like nice sign, fag. And they're going to beat me up, and then they're going to call me a Jew, and they're going to say Heil Hitler. And then they're going to kick my ass again. And then they're going to steal my wallet and be like, this is Trump's America now, baby. <laughs> I'm just going to be lying in a puddle of my own blood because of Trump supporters. That's what the media said. Loki trying to eat another Hot Pocket. Loki? You. Make sure you got enough for all those letters. <laughs> Movie hand. to turn herself into the victim. Women deserve a space, safe space on campus. Queer people deserve a safe, safe space on campus. Trans people deserve a space, safe space on campus. You mean how? Enough. Why do men need a safe space on campus? Why do men need a safe space? Because the very idea of an event, of an event where men are talking about men's issues in in a non-sanctioned manner, then you have what happened at the war war and feral protest. I don't know if you watched the footage of that. Right? But if I were one of the men who was trying to attend an event talking about male suicide and all kinds of other stuff, and I had some woman... You're pathetic. You're like little worms. I love it. You're so cute. Well, no, so are you going to make a point? Or I mean, you, just... you know, no, I'm the, just yelling you know at you. the vast That's my majority point. of the people who work for us are women, actually. Yeah. Those poor people. I have done my research. I have done my research. You're fucking old. Old. You're fucking a white male. Yes. In America. Yes. Look at all the fucking uh, black people that are Mexicans. It's not a fucking issue compared to the black people that are police. Bullshit. The white guys are right. Okay. Well, when you do that, we're never gonna have a civil discussion. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to have a civil discussion. I want to call you assholes. Yeah. By believing these ideas, you're inherently disrespectful of oh, people so, of color, so you don't, of women, oh, really? of gay people, oh, really? of people with depression. How, 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 are we, how are we inherently disrespectful to those people? Because your policies hurt us. And you're white assholes, white bros, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry dudes. that I'm white and that automatically means <laughs> so I'm white. So a white guy is not allowed to have any opinions? You, um, well, you have shitty opinions. Like, I mean, you're allowed to be as rude as you want, but... Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day, and I mean... You're 
welcome to be as privileged and much of a dickbag as you want. And except, this is what you're except let, here. let's see. Hey, you're you're, a, a, punk? you're, you're a, a white man! man. This, this is, is fucking crazy! Shit. Feminism is cancer. Thank you very much. This actually happened to my eldest son, who's in grade eight. Uh, he was in the, in the schoolyard playing. A grade one girl walked up to him, slapped him across the head, and said, <clears throat> you are not allowed to hit girls. You cannot hit me back. Mm -hmm. I'd like to... Well, at least she was being honest. You know, an, an adult woman who would do that would probably find a way... Who's throwing the insults and who's being respectful to you and not, you not calling... Oh, These policies so I'm, are not so I'm, so I'm calling you. Let's look at socialist countries like Venezuela. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's, how did the Soviet Union work out? They were socialist. They, oh, wait, they failed. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Well, I mean, I'm paying my loans. I don't have yeah, he's paying his loans. Yeah, that's nice for we you. We have these things called scholarships. We have... So because I'm oh, a white because man, he's white, not yeah. because I work How, how does... Look at your <laughs> ugly asshole face. Like, you are so into it. You can't even this see is it. Really this is actually really funny how, how pathetic this is. I know, you're adorable. <laughs> you're so cute. I love talking to guys like I'd rather, you. That's 